Jesus came on the day. <laughs> Tell you a joke, maybe. It's all a joke. The whole thing's a joke. So um, it is suggested that this is all there is. All there is is this. This is wholeness. There isn't anything other than this. This is wholeness. This is energy. Energy is everything. I like the word energy. All there is is energy. And that energy is free and mad and can also appear to be ordered and logical. And that energy comes out of no thing. Energy, this life, these seats, these bodies, this voice, is no thing appearing as energy in different forms. So what we're talking about, well, what this is talking about today is the formless form. The no thing which is everything. The emptiness which is fullness. And those things are not apart from each other. The absolute and the relative are one. There isn't an absolute that becomes relative. The absolute and the relative are one. Form and formless is one. So what we're sharing together is a mystery. What, this is, what we're talking about today is a mystery. It can't be comprehended. What we're talking about today can't be known. It is unknowable. So we're not going to reach a conclusion. This isn't going to reach a conclusion. There is no conclusion. There is no answer. All there is, is energy appearing in any way it can, in every way that it can. Every, everything that appears is energy, and everything that doesn't appear is also energy. So all there is, is what is and isn't. And that energy is completely free. It has no author there is no authority over it. There's nothing directing it. There's nothing driving it in a certain direction. It's mad and free. And it's also a magician. It's a magician because it can become anything. It can move faster than light and at the same time be absolute emptiness. And it can also, because it's free, it can also appear, appear to be contracted and limited. So when it appears to be contracted and limited, it also seems to arise in the human physiology. The human physiology takes on a contracted state, a contracted energy, energy in a, in a contracted form. And so that human physiology, which is only energy, which is only wholeness, feels a contracted energy, and when that contracted energy arises, what also arises with it is a, a sense of identity. Suddenly, me is born. At a very early age, even in the womb, me arises. The sense of being a separate individual arises at a very early age. And it is simply wholeness, it is simply wholeness appearing to be something that is separate from the whole. And that me, that individual, that I, that self, whatever you like to call it, grows up with lots of other me's and I's and becomes convinced that it is real. And so the story of me arises and grows and develops. And the story of me includes a sense that me is real, I'm a real person, I have free will, that free will is mine, I'm on a journey, I was born, I will live and I will die, and that is real. The whole, the whole thing for me is real because me can only exist in an artificial reality which is a subject-object reality. Me can only arise and exist and, and find itself and experience itself in a separate reality, which is, uh, which is um, an experience of being a subject surrounded by objects. So I am something here, and everything else that's happening is something out there that's separate from this. I call it the story of me, but you could call it the dreamer on the dream bus. Who's driving the dream bus? 
Well, the answer to who's driving the dream bus, the dreamer, the driver, thinks he knows the answer because it thinks it's driving a dream bus. It started driving it at an early age and now it's driving it a bit quicker. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> and it's on a journey to somewhere. It's going to somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I don't know where that is, but I'm going somewhere. And sometimes it gets to a bus stop, but it doesn't stop because the bus stop says, what's next? <laughs> because me can only exist and live in what's next. It lives in an artificial reality in which it feels it is real and it feels that time is real and it's on a journey going somewhere. It's always on a journey into what will be and can't possibly recognise what is. The experience of being me is dissatisfying. Basically, that may not be recognised by lots of me's, but for some me's who are sensitive, there's a feeling of dissatisfaction. And the, what, where that comes from is living in a subject-object reality. Because the me experiences everything through a separate veil. Everything is separate. So the me never sees colour, hears sound, sees the sky, sees a tree as it is. It sees it and experiences it within itself as an object, as a separate object. So everything is experienced through a veil of separation. And that is dissatisfying. And for some people, they feel they lack something. They feel there's something missing. So they go to search for it. Seeking begins. They might go to a religion, a therapist, or they might go to something they called, they've heard called enlightenment. Enlightenment sounds as though it could be the answer to what I lack. But what they carry with them in this artificial reality, let's remember, is that they are a subject and there's an, what, they, what they're looking for is an object called, let's call it self-fulfillment. And they've grown up believing that they have free will and choice, and they've grown up believing that they can influence their story. And so, if they feel that they want to become enlightened, because they have managed to do some things through free will and choice, and they also believe they can become enlightened through their own effort, or through the help of a teacher. When they go to religion, they get a list. When they go to a therapist, they get another list. When they go to an enlightened teacher, a teacher of enlightenment, they get another list, meditation, open your fourth chakra, whatever you like, self-inquiry. All those things are given to them as a way, a path on their journey in the bus to find enlightenment. And they try these things, try hard at them, and at some time or other, they also experience states. They have states of peace or they even might feel um, fulfilled in some way or other, or, or even maybe detached. That's a state that's very enjoyable, makes you feel like God for about five minutes. But all of these things are happening on a journey in a bus, and they all come and go. All these states that these people experience are transient. They come and they go because they are arising in a story. Story? Um, a, a, a sequence of events. So what we're talking about here is another possibility. What we're sharing here is the possibility that that whole structure of me, the whole sense of there being in me, the whole sense of there being free will and choice and a journey to try and find something called self-fulfillment, whatever you like, happiness, all of that is artificial it's illusory, and in some way or other, it has no substance of any kind. It's just a set of different experiences that are happening. And the whole sense that me can make an effort or, or go through a list of functions in order to find something called enlightenment is totally and utterly ludicrous. The whole effort to become enlightened, the whole effort to find some state or to reach some state is absolutely futile. And so, uh, two things seem to happen at, at these meetings. One is that we share uh, concepts together 
about um, the beliefs that maybe me has collected together to keep itself secure and to make it feel that it is real. And the other thing that goes on is beyond words. What, what really goes on here, or at any meeting, is beyond words. It's energetic. Because the whole sense of being separate is an energy. It's not a thought or a belief or an idea. Separation isn't something that comes out of I thought or anything like a belief. Separation is essentially an energy. It's energy, as we just said before, all there is is energy, and energy can become contracted. So there isn't someone who's separate. There is simply wholeness appearing as a separate person, which is a contracted energy. It's a, it's a feeling in the whole body of being contracted. So what can happen is that that sense of energy, that sense of contraction, which is a tight feeling, can simply melt back into the whole of the boundless energy, which is all there is. So we can share ideas together and concepts together, but basically the most freeing, the most liberating thing that's happening in these meetings is beyond words. It's pointing to something which can't be described. This can't be described. What, what we long for can't be described. What we long for is constantly all there is. What we long for remains hidden from the seeker by already being everything. And when that me, that whole contracted artificial sense of me collapses, what's left is again indescribable. You could say what's left is what is and isn't. You could say what's left is beingness. But there is no one that it is left for. There isn't someone who now knows something. There isn't someone who's now conscious of something. There isn't someone now who's aware. Awareness and consciousness simply die with the me. Because awareness is a way for me to remain separate from that which it is aware of. So it's the whole collapse of everything that we that the seeker would believe in about itself and about the nature of reality. And that collapse that leaves nothing. And when it leaves nothing, it leaves everything. When there is nothing, then there is everything. Then there's the absolute joy of life. But there is no one that has that experience. There just is the joy of life. said it's mad and free and you used several other words too I, I guess I interpret that as that you're saying it's everything I just wondered if you had a distinction for mad and free, <laughs> or whether you were just saying it's kind of it's everything it's a, oh, it is everything it is all there, it is energy is all there is and energy is totally unpredictable nobody in this room knows what's going to happen next nobody the, the me might believe it does, because it has a sense of belief about the idea of what the future would be like. That's one of its dilemmas. But in fact, me is simply energy, wholeness, arising as me. And let's make it something else clear. All seeking, all searching, all identification is only wholeness appearing as that. There's nothing right or wrong with anything. There's nothing right or wrong with seeking or not seeking. All of those things are energy in that form. But energy, um, because it's boundless, it can be crazy. It can be mad. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be what we think of as ordered and predictable. Life is not predictable, but me tries to make it predictable. Me wants life to be safe. So me invests in awareness or knowing I know myself, I'm aware of myself, I'm, therefore I'm aware of you, and I'm aware of what's happening 
That's a sort of control. It comes out of the need to um, continue. If I continue, then I know I will continue. Self-consciousness is, is a contracted sense of energy. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a knowing of the self, and it's, it, it only arises in the story of me, or it arises on the dream bus journey. I mean, the dream bus is interesting, actually, because you know, it is a, the, the me is the only thing that drives a dream bus, because the me is the dreamer. Uh, but the whole nature of that, that movement around in a circle is simply that. It's like, I don't know whether you've been to a fair where, you, where as a little kid I got on, on one of those things that goes around in a circle, a train, and I sat in the train and it had a steering wheel. And I was absolutely sure that I was steering that thing. <laughs> and you know, it didn't matter which way I turned the wheel, it all went round in the same circle and came back to the beginning again. And that is the dilemma for me. Me believes it's driving something, and, and it's driving it in a certain direction. It's driving it in the right direction or the wrong direction, or it can change a direction. That is the dream, that's the dilemma. The greatest dilemma for me is that it thinks it's real, and it thinks it dreams that there is a real dream bus. <laughs> So the me collapses. The me collapses. Collapses. Yes. Well, this, I'm awfully sorry about this. I did warn you that this was a mystery. The me apparently collapses. Everything is only apparent. There isn't anything that's only real. Everything is real and unreal. So everything that is, is also not. And it is in appearance. The me apparently collapses. But when the me collapses, there's a recognition by no one that there never was a me. There was, never was a real me. So the collapse of the real me is the collapse of something that was never real. I was going to ask, uh, what happens to the story of me? Oh, when well, there never was one. It's only an appearance. Like everything else, the story of me, which I've just described, driving the bus and all that, is simply wholeness appearing as the story of me looking for wholeness. Wholeness energy is capable of arising as something that is apart from itself and chasing all over the world looking for itself. Have you noticed that? <laughs> it sits in caves, it eats rice, it meditates for 20 years, and all of it is wonderfully, wonderfully futile. <laughs> so, because I'm a scientist, uh, when we talk about energy, there's usually a source of energy. Oh, well, nothing is the source of energy. All that is, is out of no thing. All there is, is no thing, and out of no thing apparently arises everything. It's as simple as that. But, let's be clear about this, the no thing and the everything are simultaneous. They are the same thing. There isn't a no thing that becomes everything. That's the source of dualistic teaching. Becoming, the teaching of becoming comes from the idea that the absolute is somewhere up in a pink cloud in a big church, and then it sends down the relative to the lower level, to you people. <laughs> You're only relative, you know. This is the whole dilemma, this is the whole basic root of uh, the illusion that there is a seeker who can find something else, who can become enlightened. Nothing becomes anything. Nobody becomes enlightened. There's no such thing as an enlightened person. So who wills me here? Nobody is here. Where is, is there anybody here? <laughs> there isn't anyone here, but there may be a dream that there is a me sitting on a seat. There may be the idea, I am, I'm here, and I know I'm sitting on a seat. That's how me remains separate, by knowing or being aware that it's sitting on a seat. For awareness to function, it can only function with something that's separate. It can only function in awareness of something else. 
that's how me remains separate. But that sense that you are definitely here and you are real and that you're sitting on a seat and that sitting on a seat is really happening to you, that is the illusion. That's the only illusion. Everything else is what it is and isn't. So if the dream bus isn't real, why stay on the dream bus? Because the me can't, can't get off it. Because the me believes it's real, it then not jump off the dream bus. It wants to go on driving faster and faster and faster to find the final destination. It never will. Because it's, strangely enough, it doesn't know it, but it's going around in circles. And what it meets on the dream bus are dream teachers who will tell it, look, I can help you. I can, I can tune your engine up for a start. I, I, can, I can change the chairs to my more luxurious ones. And I'll even put on music. So the, the, the dream teacher is helping me to make its prison more comfortable. That's all it's doing. And that, that feeling of comfort can last even up to a week sometimes. But what, what hasn't been uh, dealt with, and can't be dealt with ever, is separation. There is nothing that can so resolve separation because it isn't real anyway. Don't worry if we run out of questions or anything, because at uh, residentials and even at meetings, there's, there can be an awful lot of silence after a while. <laughs> uh, it's like it's checkmate. Um, yes, everything you say is totally correct. Sorry? And the truth. Um, oh, no, it's not the, this is not the truth. Well, you know what I'm saying. No. Uh, I'll not get that. Listen, you know this is not I'm the saying. truth. I best be clear, this isn't the truth. There's no truth. Okay. But the, there is, when you, okay, even when there is no, no me, there's no, I haven't said there's no me. No, I've okay. said that me is in appearance. Me no is wholeness me. appearing as me. Yeah, but basically there's still a rational mind, for instance. Even when... No. Well, there is, because... Oh. <laughs> but there is. Show me, show me your mind. What is yeah, your mind? From that, okay, from the absolute... From um, the place where you're talking from, or from where I'm talking from now. Yes, absolutely, you're right. But at the same time, there is. <laughs> because there is a, a brain that functions, a human brain that functions. Yeah. Well, so I it know. can predict that you're not going to shoot me right now. You know, or you don't you, know, you, that. You know You never know. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm saying is that every, everything you're saying is, <laughs> everything you're saying is, you know, totally the case. But at the same time, there's still a human process and you could say that the searching also join that delusion there is a learning process as I don't, well. I don't, I'm sorry I've, I've lost your voice yeah. now the search is wholeness searching for itself yeah. yeah but within that the delusion comes about because there is a learning process to, to eventually recognise to eventually recognise what always is the case that's fine if you're on yeah. a learning process then enjoy it yeah but it always is the case even when you recognise that this, you know there always is a like, quantum physics or what you're or describing is what's happening there that's what's happening there even when there's nobody it still goes on so know? that's what's happening there there is no agenda here to change that 
There's no interest here in changing anybody's uh, belief because that would be ridiculous. This isn't about somebody believing something different. So there's no agenda here. This is yes, one of the very few meetings this weekend, okay? Yeah. One of the very few meetings this weekend, which for the individual is absolutely pointless. Here we know that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, totally. What you said. But at the same time, there's still an evolutionary process of life. You're describing what's happening there. There's still a, a seed becoming a tree, even though it's always arising from the very thing that you're saying. So it's both simultaneously. Even when there is no, no self, or I know you might, you know, you know what I'm saying on that. Anyway. No, I don't. But well, you know, there is no me. When I can hear what you're saying, and what I have to say is that I that's think all, what, everything you're, what you're describing is what you believe, and that's fine. No, 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 it's not that. All oh, right. What I'm saying is, is, it, is that are you, are you, what you're saying is the truth, is it? Well, what I'm saying is, is a recognition of both the fact that there is no one here, but also there's still a human process going on. I think that's what I've just described. Yeah, but I think we'll have to probably agree and add a slight, oh. <laughs> a slight cup of tea as well later. Good to chat, mate. Um, so the seeker, the, the seeking energy, will never find. And the end of seeking and the dropping away of seeking is the beginning. Of well, it's not the beginning because there was never anything happening. Okay, so the, rea the realization of nothing ever no, happening. No, there isn't a realisation of nothing, because otherwise there'd be a realiser. There's no realiser. There just, it is that that which lived in the illusion of being separate simply isn't there anymore. And all there is is wholeness. All there is is life. Passionate, full-on life. Everything is just full-on alive. <coughs> There's nothing um, separate to it. There's nothing trying to measure it or work out what it's about, it just is life. Beingness here, but no individual, but no individual is here in the room. Well, there, there, is an appear, there can be an appearance of an individual. The, the separation or individuality, whatever you like to call it, the I, the self, is simply no thing appearing as I. 
It's another appearance of wholeness. It's wholeness appearing as, as apparently a separate individual. It's not real and it's not unreal. Like a game? It, you could, it may be, but that sounds a bit frivolous. So I don't know. Game, it's just what's happening. It's only apparently happening. But the expansion and contraction? Are apparently happening. Apparent is the big word. Mm. Nothing, everything is real and unreal. It's, a, it's apparent. This is apparent. Which is why you take it so lightly. Sorry? Which is why it's taken so lightly. Who oh, by? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very serious. Not. <laughs> of course, because it's seen through. The whole drama that me thinks is there, the whole drama of me and my story and where I went to and what I, happened, is just seen through as light appearing as that. It has no significance at all. There is nothing that is significant or important. All there is is what is, which is joyfully free as it is. It doesn't need consciousness or awareness. It doesn't need any of those. It doesn't need anything. It's already complete. This is already complete. You called it joyfully free. Is, is that not a label on it? So to call, to, you called it joyfully free. Is that not labelling it? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with a bit of joy? It's about something that's absolutely simple, absolutely ordinary, and absolutely obvious, which the seeker can never possibly see. It's this. It's what's happening. What's happening in this room is what you long for. What's happening to this, in this room to you is shouting at you. Life is shouting at you. It's happening in the feeling in your body, in feeling warm, in thinking, in aching, in hearing sounds. Everything that is happening is the song of the beloved. But the me can't hear it because it's looking for something else. It's always looking somewhere else. So if my attendance here is pointless... Sorry, if, if my I have to see who's talking. Can you oh, right, it's me. Oh, yeah. yeah. If my attendance here is pointless, why am I here? Well, you're here to try and find a point. You're here to try and... I suggest you're here to try and find something. You never will find anything, because nothing has been lost. But the idea that your visit here is pointless would be possibly a threat to the me. The me always thinks that what it does is incredibly important. So to be told that actually your whole activity is utterly pointless and futile is not very becoming. <laughs> I, the, I'm, somebody said to me, you're a lousy salesman, you know, you'll never sell this to anyone. <laughs> actually, what's interesting is I'm not trying to. It's not for sale. So this message is constantly rejected by the seeker. People come to my meetings and run as fast as they can. <laughs> Because the, the me, this is the last thing that me wants to hear. My life, the futile. So, you know, that's what happens. But there's, there's the odd madman that stays. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, why are you here? I'm not here. You're not here? No. <laughs> there's no one here. It's what's happening. And there's no uh, reason for it, and there's no... Uh, purpose to it. So, when there's a recognition, or when... No, there's no recognition. Okay, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the vehicle, the human body, is clearly a part, and you probably will agree with this anyway, you may not. No, I don't. <laughs> and even if there isn't one, or you know what I'm saying. 
you know, is clearly a vehicle that, that is a part of life in the same way a tree is a part of life, you know, actually as a physical, mental and physical ex existence. Apparently. So from, from that apparently. point of view... Apparently. Yeah, apparently, totally. From that point of view, there is a purpose. And the purpose uh, is... For me, there, in the story of me and on the dream bus, there's definitely a purpose and a reason. No, no, oh. no story. I mean, oh, just, okay. a, just as a human being that wakes up in the morning and lives a life. And so when it is seen that there is no body here, from that there is still a, a, a selfless purpose, which is, you know, to basically... You know, which is why you're speaking right now, is to, oh, is to no, help. Oh, no, absolutely isn't. Yeah, well, yeah, but you're still coming from the, you know, an idea that... No. No, but you're still a vehicle. You're talking about me. Life. I'm sorry, I'm not driving a dream bus anymore. Yeah, yeah, but even when that, that does go, as, as a human body... I mean, you could do a Ramana Maharshi thing and just sit in a cave. That's absolutely fine. Or you could not do that. You could basically try and solve climate change, or you could... Basically, yeah, well, you basically could sit here just having this conversation now. So what you're suggesting, hold on, what you're suggesting is that there is someone who has a choice to do something. No, no, so no, if no. that's what you believe, that's what you believe, thank you very much. No, no, but I'm not saying I'm, that. I'm saying there's, there's still a human, a human being right. that basically exists, you know, to actually function. Which is simply energy, and, and energy arising as a human being. But there's also, when you recognise there's no separation, there's incredible compassion for the suffering going on oh. in the world. And that, that's not coming from a dream bus. That's coming from a reality. It's coming from an actuality. Like what Krishnamurti says. And I think that, that oh, is the thing that we need right. to start focusing oh, well, on. Well, it must be right then. Because we have this... It? Oh, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> because we have this... No, but there is something called honesty. There is also something called compassion. When there is nobody there, and that means that people are... At, we do have a responsibility even when there is nobody there for responsibility. Thank you very it's much. It's an impersonal Thank you very much. That's what you believe. Thing. That's anyway, what you believe. Thank you. I look forward to a cup of tea Thank you. Uh, I think I've heard you say, I, I know I've heard other people say that w when you get down to nothing, that, again, these are oh, all crazy ahead. words, but uh, that what there is is love. Uh, and I know it's just a word. and Unconditional uh, love, which can't be comprehended by me. Mm. And... and can you say anything about this notion of unconditional love? Why would people use that? Is it an experience? No, no. All there is is wholeness. All there is is energy. All there is is unconditional love. All there is is compassion. There isn't something... Compassion isn't something you bring to yourself and turn on. There isn't anyone here who has compassion. There's no one here who has anything. All of that, all there is here is nothing. And in that nothing, there is unconditional love, compassion and all those things. But they can't be described because they can't be known. What we're talking about here is something that is totally unknowable. It has nothing to do with knowing anything or reaching something that you now have. It's totally unknowable. And it isn't something that somebody can use or not use because there isn't anyone left. There never was anyone. So uncon unconditional love can't be described except to say that it is unconditional and all-inclusive. Unconditional love is horror, terror, joy, whatever. It's all of those things. It's the energy which drives this apparent 
manifestation. Beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> I just wanted to um, pick up on what the gentleman at the back was saying because maybe it could be explained that um, energy arises as meaning. Energy arises. arises as meaning. So I think... Um, oh, it does, in the dream bath. So I think James, James I think, was talking about um, a sense of compassion mm. for an apparent world. Um, and actually, your message doesn't negate that. Sorry? I don't think your message kind of negates mm. that. It's just that that is just arising. It is, but nobody has but it. Exactly. It doesn't happen to me. Yeah. But of course, the whole world is compassion. Yeah. The whole world is also an appearance out of nothing. It's also what? It's an appearance out of nothing. Yeah. It, but it is compassion. The whole of this is compassion, is unconditional love. But there is nobody that has that and can use it or give it to other people. No, isn't that hilarious? It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing because it's so freeing. You know, this idea, I am now compassionate and I will give you compassion and all that crap. You know, it isn't, there isn't anyone. There's just compassion and freedom. <laughs> The me wants to own everything. It wants to have everything. It's the, it's, the, it's the rich man. It's more difficult for a rich man. Thought. Sorry, so I, there's an owning of our thoughts, or the, there's an ownership and a grasping. Yeah, me own thought. Yeah. Um, so there's an, an an agenda and a I'm I've got it. I'm right. This is it, and 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 an expression of the the my thoughts and it's a sort of graspy, seeky, I wantness. Mm. And giving that up and resting. Mm, my brother. What is it? <laughs> oh, it's 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 terrifying, and colossal, and simple, and free, free. Yeah, it's everything. What we learn for, what, what me learns for, is its own absence. What it fears most is its own absence. It wants it and fears it. It wants it and fears it. Yeah, most, more than anything. So what it does in order to avoid being absent is it seeks. If it goes on seeking, it will continue because somewhere it already recognises that it'll never find what it's looking for because what it's looking for has never been lost. Yeah. So it goes on seeking well, 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 because it knows somewhere that then it'll go on continue. So seeking keeps it and keeps the me alive. Yeah. Well. Yeah. All teaching of see all teachers feed the seeker. Well, you could do this or that. And the giving up of seeking is the giving up of self? Me? Well, not well. For one thing, me can't give up seeking because me is seeking. 
me is separation, me is seeking, me is the story. So, yeah, when me collapses, seeking story and all of that simply collapses with it. So this is certainly not about me doing anything. This is a way of illuminating the illusion of there being a me. Enlightenment is the biggest, dis- <laughs> for me, the enlightenment would be the biggest disappointment that it could have, but what's fortunate about it is that when it happens, he, me won't be there, so. <laughs> Just staying on the theme of the rich man entering, um, and what Rachel was just saying, and what you were saying before then about compassion is, kind of there is compassion. The me wants to be compassionate, so it wants to be, it wants to just take that on, it wants to Mm. own it, rather than letting it be. Yeah. Yeah. Me wants to own everything that's happening. Yeah, including compassion. Compassion, everything, yeah. Yeah, and, and that is keeping me, keeping me <laughs> yeah, keep, alive. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, the me alive. Yeah. 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 And when thinking happens and there's a me, the me takes ownership of the thinking and gives it energy, you know, about the CD, I'm going bankrupt, or whatever, whichever one you like. And that, that thought arises, me takes it on board and takes it home to tea. And then they have a conversation and it gives that thought energy. When me drops away, thoughts still arise, but they can't find anybody to talk to. So they simply return from where they come, no thing. No thing, thinking arises and falls back into no thing, just like everything else. Apparently, apparently. Nothing's happening at all, there's, there is no thing happening. The mystery of this is that there's nothing happening. It only appears to be happening. So Tony, would you say causality is an illusion? No, causality, like everything else, like the me, is both real and unreal. Everything is only real and unreal. Therefore, it isn't the truth, and it's you know, uh, uh, it's not it's not a real thing. It appears to happen. Do you think that would you say that both just concepts and life can't be reduced as concepts? Is that is that what you're saying? Or? Well, in a sense, yeah. The belief or the or the belief that me has that can that, that cause and effect are real comes from the, the feeling that it has that it is real. <laughs> Everything else must be real because I'm real. So in talking about it and using words, obviously it's conceptual. But what's going on here is absolutely beyond these words. These words are only pointing to something. They can never be that. How can you, you can't describe what is. It can't be described in words. If you could know it, it would be on the front of every newspaper in the world. <laughs> you can't, this is what, the one thing you can't get hold of. But there is a talking about it that can happen. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, ultimately, you can't really say on one level there's causality and on another level there isn't. No. Because there's not, there aren't really levels. No, at any levels of anything. Everything, everything is only in appearance. Are we okay for time? Another one minute. Yeah. Actually, you will. In one minute, I could actually tell you the secret. <laughs> I've forgotten. <laughs> Thank you.